Now we have the self-join cookbook, and I'm down to about 10 minutes. So I'm going to go through this relatively quickly. Uh, the idea behind a self-join, self-joins have had uh, bad reps over the course of time from performance perspective. My honest opinion is that it's not the self-join itself that's been the poor performer. It's been that frequently self-joins are written against columns that do not have good indexes. For example, here we're saying, give me the list of all the authors that live in the same city as each other. You tend not to put an index on city because you're usually not doing a lookup on city. So if we're joining on city, um, we need an index on city. If it's not there, we're going to get bad performance. So uh, let's just do quick. I'm going to skip this example, but we're going to do a qu uh, quick cookbook for both types of self-join. The both, two types of self-join we're going to look at are uh, parent-child self-joins, uh, kit part, manager, employee, and then we're going to do uh, a lookup self-join, uh, which is more along the lines of give me all the authors in the same city. So starting with this one, bill of materials type of structure, we see this a lot also in security. Uh, with the advent of, I think, SQL Server 2008, we had the ability to put hierarchies directly in here as a data type and use uh, functions in order to manage them, but a lot of folks still haven't. Here we have an organizational chart which represents Mary as the big boss, Joe Allen and Mark work for Mary, and Margaret works for Joe. To store this type of information uh, in a tabular manner, we have the ID of the employee, the name of the employee, and the manager's ID. What this allows us to do is map this back to itself and say, okay, uh, employee ID 2222 is Joe. Joe's manager is 1234. We map this back to 1234, which happens to be Mary. To write the self-join that displays these things on a single line, what we need to do is join that table to itself. How do we do it? Here's my recommended cookbook for the self-join. First, code the from clause. We join from employees to employees. Well, if we're going to be doing a self-join, the alias is mandatory. In this situation, a well-named alias is going to save you a lot of aggravation. So. Here I named one side of the join emp for employee and the other side of the join mgr for manager. Next I code the select. Select the ID from the employee side, the name from the employee side, and tell me who this person works for. So I'm going to get the name from the manager side. Finally, code the join clause. What we want to specify here is that the Manager ID in the employee table corresponds with the employee ID in the manager table. Note that the employee and the manager table are the same. These are just the aliases. Note, it is fairly common to get this relationship backwards. When you do that, uh, Mary works for Joe, Mary works for Bob, Mary works for everybody except herself. When we get it correctly, Joe works for Mary, Ellen works for Mary, Mark works for Mary, and Margaret works for Joe. Here is a standard parent-child self-join. Uh, self Note, we are missing a row of data. Why is that? The self-join works just the same way the regular join works. And what ends up happening is there's no join for Mary, and as a result, she doesn't show up. We'll be evaluating this one just in a few minutes as we go to outer joins. The second type of self-join is a matching data self-join. This is that where is the, uh, the missing city, or who lives in the same city. This one is a little bit trickier, because what ends up happening is, uh, if I live in the same city, uh, I have co-authored books with my wife. My name is Jeff Garbus, her name is Penny Garbus. We've got the same address, same everything. So we can't just match on last name, we have to match on first name. Uh, as we uh, start looking at these things, uh, what we want to be able to do is bring back uh, Jeff Garbus and Penny Garbus in the same city, but we don't want to bring us back twice. We also don't want to bring back Jeff Garbus and Jeff Garbus because that makes us look cities, silly. So what we have to do is uh, write the join criteria, write them in the normal way, but then we have to eliminate the dupes, meaning don't join me to myself. And then the other is I don't want Jeff and Penny listed as well as Penny and Jeff. I want one or the other. Which order? 
I don't care uh, unless I specify. Uh, but from a practical perspective, uh, we want to make sure that we eliminate the dupes. So the way that we write the self-join, ma uh, the matching data self-joins is identify the columns we need in the result set, uh, put those in the select list. The table name with different aliases, well, there really isn't, you can call them left and right. You can, well, actually, you probably can't do that because those are, left and right are both keywords. I just call them A1 and A2 because I don't like to type a lot. I will type if it's good documentation or if I have a good reason for it. We join the tables on the common field, which is usually not a unique key. So here we're joining on city. City's not unique. Remember to add an index on city. Now, there's two other things that we need to do in order to make this join work. First, we need a condition that says, don't join me to myself. So here I'm specifying that I don't want the author ID in the left side to be the same as the author ID in the right side. The second thing I want to do is not bring in Penny Jeff and Jeff Penny. I just want to bring in one or the other. Generally, this is performed with an arbitrary uh, an arbitrary condition on a unique key, often the primary key. So here I'm saying whoever has the higher author ID is going to get listed first. So I only want the one that's greater. So bring back Jeff or Penny, but not both. That eliminates it. Note that you can generally combine these because if the author ID on the left side is greater than the author ID on the right side, we can be assured that they're not equal. Uh, Self-join notes are just basically, again, I'm, I'm running out of time. Uh, the notes on self-joins just basically say there are good reasons uh, to write the self-joins. In the past, people have said that they perform badly, and there are some alternatives. Outer joins. The idea behind an outer join is that with an inner join, if I join that manager table to or the employee table to itself, Mary doesn't show up because there's no matching row. A join says, give me all the rows in table A that have matching rows in table B, but what if they don't match? In this example, what I want to do is bring back the titles, whether or not the titles have sold, so that I can see that I do carry the title, but that it has zero sales. We do that with the outer join. Left outer join says, I want the one on the left to show up whether I've got rows on the right. What the outer piece does is it says, okay, where I've got sales, I'm reporting null because I have no sales. I'm still reporting the name of the book from the left. This query that we wrote earlier, the self-join, can certainly be written as an outer join. Here it says emp join employees. I bring back four rows instead of five. What I can do is say left join. What this does is bring back the employee, whether or not I have the manager. That brings Mary back for me. Why is this good? Well, it gets me all my entire employee list, even if they don't have a manager that they're working for. Keep in mind that in real life, you don't want to use the word null in a report. You probably want to leave it blank or just a little note that says, Mary's the big boss. Full order joins are currently permitted uh, using the new ANSI SQL syntax. And by the way, if you're not doing that, you should be using new ANSI syntax for absolutely everything these days. Outer join optimization. The real issue for outer joins is that if I specify an outer join, I am forcing that table on the left, left outer join, that table on the left has to be the outer table in the join. If the join was previously going in the opposite direction and running fast and I change the join order and it's running slowly, I may be missing a join. I may be missing, I'm sorry, missing a, a join index. This is the thing that you have to look out for, and the situation where adding the outer or the left suddenly makes something run a lot slower, it's almost always a missing index caused by the change in join order. Right orders are the same as uh, right outer join, same as the left outer join. Uh, actually, the SQL Server internally converts the right to a left. Summary, and it just slid in under the wire. Thank you all for uh, your attendance. Uh, we've talked a lot about joins, join orders. Obviously, we're not doing the lab because this is not the class. And by the way, if you're interested in the class, do let us know. 
How do we find the poorly performing queries is one of the questions I'm frequently asked, and there are a lot of ways of identifying them. I always use a tool. For those of you uh, who are interested, uh, we use Confio Ignite. If you would like to download Confio Ignite, go to this web address that we're looking at, confio.com slash sec. If you do that, email me directly. Uh, I will get you a 14-day key. Not only that, I'll spend some time with you looking at your system and identifying what the low-hanging fruit is for you. And not only identifies queries, it does a lot of really good stuff in terms of identifying uh, what's useful to you, uh, all the physical issues. Uh, if you have a VMware, it'll tell you whether it's on the virtual server or the physical box. You can identify who's doing what to whom and when. The data is stored historically. Alerts reporting, incredibly cool tool. We do use this with all of our managed services customers.